So we've seen our first example of a power law, the word frequencies for the novel Moby Dick. In this video, what I'd like to do is contrast power laws with normal or Gaussian distributions. So first, a little bit more about power laws. So a power law says something is distributed. The probability is given by something of the following form. So some constant c times x to the minus alpha. This is a more um, a common way of writing this. One usually puts the minus sign here, and alpha or a is common. For the word frequency example, we had the constant was, I think, about 0 0.59, and this was maybe 1.95 or so. So um, some features of power laws, as I've already discussed, is that x, the quantity of interest, takes on a very wide range of values. So x takes on wide range of values. Right, and that's what we saw here. There are um, many words that appear only once, and the uh, largest word, the most frequent word, actually appears way off this. Uh, the most common word is way out over here, and that's 14,086. So the range of x, the thing we're trying to describe, the thing we're trying to see how it's distributed, goes from 1 to about 14,000. So that's a really, really big range. Uh, in contrast, here's a, another example. Of uh, something that is most definitely not power law distributed. So these are heights of um, a little over 500 American men. And this is 60, so that's 5 feet, 6 feet. Let's see, there is 7 feet. So this is um, a distribution. And here we see a very small range from 58 to 84. Um, whereas here, we had a range from 1 to 14,000. So this, and I'll say more about this as the video goes on, is an example of a situation that's well approximated by um, a Gaussian curve or normal distribution. Um, another way to think about this, the average here appears to be maybe around 68 or 70, somewhere in here. And then there is a a spread around that average. But most of the heights are pretty close to the middle value. So there's a strong central tendency. Here, that's not like the um, word frequencies cluster together in the middle anywhere. There's a lot of words with a frequency of 1, and then it just drops off. Um, the average frequency here turns out to be 11, so somewhere in there. But that's not really meaningful. That doesn't, um, I think, suggest this sort of long distribution, long tail distribution. Whereas here, if I were to say something like, mm, the average height is around 70, and uh, at least half of the heights are within 5 inches of that, that summarizes the situation pretty well. So again, this situation is described by a normal distribution. And let me write down the formula for that, even though we're not going to work with this formula directly. But it's um, normal distribution so important in science and statistics that it seems worth writing down. So the power law is given by this. The normal distribution is this function. And the main thing is that x shows a strong central tendency. So let's illustrate this. x, x. So for a power law, we're seeing that this is going to look something like that. Whereas a normal distribution is going to look something like that. This parameter here is the average. It's A. And then uh, sigma, sorry, that's a little messy. Let's see, so this is a measure of how wide um, the 
orange curve is. Larger sigma means the values are spread out more. Smaller sigma means they're all densely uh, clustered around this average value. So normal distributions are very, very common across the sciences. And there's a reason for that, known as the central limit theorem. So um, I want to spend the rest of this video talking about the central limit theorem. And I'm going to do that rather than stating it right away with an example. So we're going to see the central limit theorem in action. So let's imagine that we go back to weighing books. And it turns out on my shelf that there are only three types of books. Books that weigh one pound, three pounds, and then four pounds. Obviously, obviously this is not a realistic description of books, but um, let's just go with this example. So um, this is a histogram. We're supposed to indi indicate the following, that um, there are twice as many books that are four pounds than there are books that are three or one pound. Another way to say that is if I grab a book at random, I would um, have a 25% chance of getting a one pound book, a 25% chance of getting a three pound book, and a 50% chance of getting a four pound book. So let's calculate quickly the average uh, book weight. So in this funny library I have where there are twice as many four pound books as there are books like this, what's the average book weight? So uh, all right, average weight. So a quarter of the time, I would get a book that's one pound. And a quarter of the time, I would get a book that's three. And then half of the time, I'm going to get a book that is four. OK. So let's evaluate this. This is 3 quarters. This is 1 quarter. Half of 4 is 2. 2 plus 3 quarters plus a quarter turns out to be 3. You can verify that in the calculator if you want. So here we have um, books. If you don't like the book example, you can come up with some other example. And they're given by this weird distribution that certainly is not um, a bell curve. It doesn't look like this at all. Um, and it's certainly not a power law either. OK, so now let's imagine that instead of thinking about one book, I'm going to choose five books at a time. So I've got a big library. And this describes a distribution of the weights of the books in this funny library of mine. And if you were to choose five books, what would the average book um, weight be, the average of all those five. So you, you fill up a bag with five books. And um, what would that distribution look like? So here's the answer to that question. So this is the situation for um, weight of five books. OK. So what I did was I wrote a computer program that imagined sampling five books. So you go in the library and you choose five books at random. And you do that 10,000 times. And then you plot a histogram of the results. So let's see. We have five books. And the average book is three pounds. So the average of this bag of books is going to be 15. And we can kind of see that the 15 is here in the middle. And then we have some sort of lumpy distribution um, around here. Sometimes you happen to get um, a lot of the heavy books. Let's see, what's the largest you could get? If you happen to get all four pound books, four times five would be 20. So that looked like that happened a couple times. And sometimes you might get um, three or five one pound books. Looks like that never quite happened. But most of the time, you'll be somewhere in the middle. OK, so that's the weight of five books. Now let's imagine that instead of five, you needed to get 20 books. So you're doing some research project. You need to get 20 books from this library. So 
So here's a weight of 20 books. So what's the average? Well, you take 20 books. The average of each book is 3. So you'll expect the average to be around 60. And that's what I see. This is 60 here, where my finger is. And now, sometimes when you grab these 20 books in the library, you get a lot of the four pound ones. Sometimes you get not so many and a lot of these. Um, but the distribution of these 100,000 different samples of 20 books is starting to smooth out. And it's starting to look, you probably could see this coming, like a bell curve, like a normal distribution. All right, let's do one more. So now, what did I do here? This is, this is, I think this is, yes, this is uh, 100. It's a weight of 100 books. So the average is going to be 3 times 100, it's 300. And then sometimes I happen to get a lot of heavy books, sometimes a lot of light books. But um, now the distribution of these 100,000 um, different samples of 100 books, you'd need uh, a lot of bags to carry these 100 books, is starting to look like uh, a bell curve, a Gaussian. And so uh, I've even drawn on a dotted line here. It's probably a little hard to see. But that's because the, the dotted line, which is the normal distribution, um, kind of goes right on top of this histogram. So this is a central limit theorem. So what this says is, we started with a random variable. The random variable in this case was the weight of a book in my library. And this random variable is most definitely not distributed according to a normal distribution. This distribution, whatever it is, it's weird, it's discrete, it doesn't even have a name. But this says if I sample a bunch of these random variables and add them together, so if I add together a bunch of random variables, even if the initial random variable, the random variable itself, is not distributed with a normal distribution, that if I add together enough of them, what I'm left with is a normal distribution. So let me state um, one version of the central limit theorem. And I'll include a more careful statement with some mathematical fine print in the summary slides for this lecture, or for this unit. So what we've seen is that if x is a random variable, in this case, the mass of the books, then the distribution of a sum of the random variables, so I add together a bunch of these x's that I sample from the library, that that distribution approaches a normal distribution, a bell curve, as the number of variables in the sum becomes large. And we've seen here that for even 20 books, this isn't an, an exact uh, normal distribution, but it sure looks pretty much like a bell curve, which is pretty amazing given that um, the distribution we're sampling from, again, is asymmetric, discrete, very clearly not um, a normal distribution. Okay, so to summarize real quick and to take a look ahead, the central limit theorem says that we should expect to see normal distributions a lot. Anytime we have a bunch of things, a bunch of random things that add together to produce some result, we would expect that to um, indicate some sort of a normal distribution, some sort of a, a Gaussian or a bell curve. Um, so that's why people tend to think, <coughs> say, that human heights are distributed normally. There are lots of factors that go into determining how tall you are. Genetic, there's probably lots of different genes, lots of different environmental factors. But presumably, all of these add together in some sort of a way. And they're going to produce this normal distribution. So that's what the central limit theorem tells us to suggest. Power laws are not Gaussians. So one of the things we want to do in this unit and beyond is say, okay, power laws, when you see them, what does that mean? And so at minimum, what we've seen here is that there's probably something that's not additive going on. That if it was um, the sum, the addition of a whole bunch of influences, we would expect something to be normal. So when a power law is going on, there's something that's non-additive. We'll say a lot more about what power laws might mean and what they might not mean in this unit um, and the next several.